Good. As promised in the previous video, we said that we are going to illustrate on how to solve a hyperbolic uh, equation using uh, the Krang uh, Nicholson method. So here is the problem. The motion of a vibrating string is governed by the wave equation with the parabolic equation, partial squared v partial t squared equals to 25 partial squared v partial x squared, t from 0 to 0 0.2 and x from 0 to 1. And then boundary and initial conditions are given as 0. And then the function defining the vibration is given by this uh, function. So we have been asked to take a step size of 0 0.02, uh, that's time step size, and then the displacement st uh, step size to be 0 0.1 to calculate the displacements of the string at t equals to 0 0.04. So copy the equation, and then let's see how the solution works. So let's solve the problem. So solution, some things that you need to remember. A solution. That we have been given that um, U are V of Uh, v of 0 t is given by 0 and V of 1 t is given by 0. And then we have been told that the equation is partial squared. V partial t squared is given by 25 uh, partial squared V partial x squared. And then x lies from 0 to 1 and t is from 0 to 0 0.2 and then another information that we've been given is that the step size h is 0 0.1 while k is given by 0 0.04 uh, 0 0.02 sorry 0.02. Now, uh, from this spacing, it tells you that uh, uh, let's just draw the grid. So, because H, uh, T lies from uh, 0 to 0 0.2, so with K being 0. Point 0 0.2, then it tells us that uh, they will have 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.02. So you have st uh, 10 steps along the y. And then uh, x is from 0 to 1, and the step size is 0 0.1. We'll also have 10 steps. Of course, we'll have 1 divided by 0 0.1, which is still 10. So uh, let me illustrate the grid on this graph here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So remember this is the T and then this is the X. 
So therefore, uh, we can label. So with this spacing given, so T is 0 0.2. So we have this is 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.18, 0 0.20 as our last value. Uh, so remember, this is this the J axis. This is the I axis. So this like we have. Uh, so and this one we have uh, zero and then zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, zero point four, zero point five. 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.0. That is the last value of x. So we have been told to find the displacement of the string at time t 0 0.04. So uh, from this one, uh, bef uh, you can because this is the j. So it is like we have t t naught, t1, t2, t3. T4, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10. And then on this other axis we have, this is X0, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6, X7, X8, x9 x10 and then remember our notation notation from our description before we started doing this example we said that x is the same as x i can be written as i and then t is the same as t j is the same as j so therefore if i say i equals two so this will be zero this will be one this will be two this will be three, this will be four, this will be five, this will be six, seven, eight, nine, and then this i equals to 10. And then similarly on this other axis, uh, j equals to zero, equals to one, equals to two, equals to three, equals to four, equals to five, equals to six, equals to seven, eight, nine, and then this j equals to 10. So when they tell us to find the displacement of the string at time t equals to 0 0.04, so it means that, so this way you have 0 0.04, which means that this is the value at j equals to 2. So we are interested in finding the displacement, all the displacement on this nodal, or of this, all these nodal points. So which means then we'll be running from j equals to 0, and then j equals to 1 and then we finish at j equals to 2 we don't have to go up to the whole 10. so we have to get these nodal points but because this the j uh, uh this this these points are the points of interest we cannot get them without getting this lower point so we'll also be forced to get the values of these other ends that are marking in green so So this is what we need to get. Now, so once we know that's, that the, that's the grid that we need to fill in, and then remember that uh, by definition, R is given by C, K over H. And for this case, our C, remember the gen standard equation is partial squared U partial t squared is given by c squared partial squared u partial x squared now because ours is 25 partial squared u partial x squared then it tells us that c squared is the same as 25 so it tells us the value of c is 5 so it will be now 5 times k was given as 0 0.02 and then h was given as 0 0.1 when you work out this one we should get the answer to be one. 
So therefore, uh, if you remember from the equation that we, uh, we had there, so then uh, uh, we know that by definition, u i sub j uh, is given by r squared into u i plus one comma j plus u i minus one comma j plus two one minus r squared u i comma j minus u i comma j minus one. This is the general equation. But then since uh, r equals r equals to one, then it means that r squared equals to one. So one minus one zero. So this part will go to zero. So we just remain with u i comma j plus one is equals to so this will be one so u i plus one comma j plus u uh, so remember our question is in terms of this so just better let's just put our variables in terms of v just to be consistent with the question so let's just put it just in uh, in terms of this So the standard one is what, what is, uh, so this is uh, V, so V, 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 V. So V I, V sub I J is given by V and then plus uh, V I comma J I minus one. So remember this is, this part is, V I minus one comma J. So then we'll have V I minus one comma J minus V I comma J minus I J minus one. So this is the first thing that you need to uh, uh, remember. The standard the general equation and then get the value of r replace uh, replace into the equation and then get the scheme that you are going to use to find the values in the equation so let's call this one one so this is the equation that we will be having and then uh, partial v partial t is given by so this so remember this, this uh, from what we have defined before, we say that this is the same as uh, saying V I one minus V I comma zero. Or you can say V I two minus V I comma one. So the difference between consecutive values, uh, 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 the values of V when you keep uh, T at zero. So remember this from the question is given as zero. So it tells us that V I comma one is the same as V I comma zero. So this is another important formula that will help us to solve some questions. So this call this one two. And then, so therefore uh, from the boundary is given. So uh, we have been given that V of X comma zero is given by uh, e raised power x plus 2x plus 3 for 0 less than x less than or equals to 3 over 5. And then e raised power 2x sine ix and then plus 9 ln of x. This is for 3 over 5. x less than or equals to 4 over 5. And then one plus two x plus three sine x plus this is uh, this uh, the, uh, the, uh, this, this hyperbolic sign from the question this is given as hyperbolic sine of x and then plus term inverse of x so this for four over five less than x, less than one. 
So here is very, there, are very, there are key things that you need to remember here. This will define the values of x, the values of x when t is kept at zero. So if I may go back to the uh, grid, so this this where the line uh, t is kept zero on the x-axis. So uh, remember now, when uh, uh, so from remember three over five is the same as zero point six, and this is the same as zero point eight, and then this is the same as zero point eight, the same as zero point six. So it means that from 0 to 0 0.6 included, because of this inequality sign, we have to use this first formula here. So, uh, which means that when you go back to the grid, uh, from this point, so remember this one you already is already given. So uh, the value the, uh, from the boundary conditions and the initial condition, this value is already non-zero. And then, so from this point here to this point, So these values here, these values of x will be defined by the first formula. Let me just call this one. Uh, let me call this one formula one. This one formula two, this one formula three. And then, uh, these other ones here, uh, from Remember, from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 included was given by the second formula. So this ones here will be defined by formula two. So this formula one. And then lastly, this one here will be defined by formula three. So remember the value at this point here is already given uh, from the condition that the one T equals to zero. So it means that when the value of X is one, at this point here, would do any value of T, the value is always zero. So therefore the value at this point is already known. So this is zero. And from the condition that V zero T is zero, then it means that for any value of T, when X is zero at this point here, we will always get zero. So therefore it's, even at this point, the value is known to be zero. So therefore now with those conditions, then now we can get uh, go ahead and get the answer. So and remember that J will be running from, uh, J runs from zero, one, and then two. Of course we have to stop at this point here. So when J equals to zero, so we, have, uh, we are going to find the values as, so when, so there are three cases, Things to consider we have j equals to zero. So this case one, so there are three cases. And then case two, j equals to one. And then case three, j equals to two. So uh, we have j equals to zero, so we have v zero comma zero so remember the first is i this is uh, this is j and then we have v uh one zero when the value of i is one then v uh, v two zero then j, uh, j always will be zero and then v three zero and then here we have v uh v zero one and then v Z, uh, V1 V1 comma 1 V2 comma 1 V3 comma 1 and then V3 uh, V4 now I equals to 4 uh, V4 comma 1 this is now v5 comma 1 we are going up to 10 so this is v40 v50 v60 uh, v61 uh, v70 
v71 and then v v80 v81 and then v90 v91 v10 0 uh, v10 1 now let me explain how we get this values here so remember generally we have v i comma j this is the x value this is the t value this is the general uh, general uh, general test so when we come uh, let me demonstrate from the grid itself So from the grid itself, so remember this is the line j equals to zero. So this uh, this is the line j equals to this on the x-axis. So uh, these are developed. So uh, this the coordinates of this point here is uh, is like we have one comma zero. Uh, this is what we have one comma zero. Mean that the value of x this x one j uh, t naught, and then this like two zero. This like Three zero on this line here. This is the point. This is the point two zero. This is two zero. Uh, three zero. This is the point uh, four zero. Up to this is the point ten zero. When you write ten, you mean x ten. When you write zero, you mean uh, when you write this one for zero, means that t t zero. So from this point to this, uh, this is these are boundary values that already begin. So the values. Uh, this is. Point zero zero v zero zero will be given ten zero is already given as zero, so we can in fact just uh, fill this as zero point zero 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 zero, or just zero, and then come and fill for this one as zero point zero, or just zero, nothing special with that. So uh, now. Uh, for v, v10 means v10 means that um, this the, the uh, this this is the point one zero. The value at x uh, value of v at x one and t zero. So it simply means uh, because what is defined the function that defines all the values on this line are what was given by the function v x comma zero. So simply replace 0 0.1 into that uh, into that function given by formula one. Uh, this formula one. We replace here x equals to zero will give you. Uh, and remember, your calculator should be in radian mode because we have both trigonometric and hyperbolic and trigonometric functions. So the first thing that you need to ensure is that you have, uh, before you start doing calculation for this question. Because you can see a trigonometric function, must you must use uh, your calculator should be in mode. So when you put 0. Uh, 0 0.1 into the first formula, you get 4.30517. Put 0. 0.2, you get 4.62140. Put 3, you get 4.94986. Put 0 0.4, you get 5.29182. Put uh, 0 0.5, you get 5.64. And then 8.72. Because the boundary conditions given are less than or equal, so it means that also the value at 0 0.6 is defined by this first formula still. So put this in this formula, put 0 0.06 you get uh after putting in the value you should get zero point uh six point zero two two one two and then for seven you don't put zero point seven in the first formula if you do that one you get it wrong because uh from these conditions given this uh first formula only works for the values of x between zero and zero point six but now uh, something more than 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 should be defined by the second formula. So therefore, you put 0 
seven in this formula to get the correct answer, and also zero point eight to get this uh, to get the correct answer in this second formula, not the first one. And when you do that one, or remember your calculator should be in radian mode, you should get uh, zero point zero seven. uh zero six five and then this other one also you put zero point eight in the same same second function you get uh zero point nine zero three zero three for zero point nine remember zero point nine is between this interval here if you just go back to the function given 0 0.9 is from 0 0.8 to 1. So this is the function that you need to use. Don't use the first one or second one. So you put 0 0.9 in this function here, and your calculator must be in more uh, radian mode for you to get the correct answer. So uh, you get Z, uh, you get 6.61237. Now, to get these other values when j equals to 1, you go back to the definition on what we said that from the boundary condition, uh, initial condition, we have VI1 equals to VI0. So whenever, so when this is, when you have like V, when you put I for zero, so V01 must be the same as V0, comma zero. When you put I for one, so V11 must be the same as V1, comma zero. When you put, I for two, so V two comma one must be the same as V two comma zero. So therefore, from uh, this second values will be easily gotten from from what you have gotten for the case V equals to uh, V uh, J equals to zero. So zero one. This is a boundary condition. So remember when you say V zero one is the same as X is zero. J, uh, J is J is a T1. I remember from what was given in the boundary conditions is that V zero T equals to zero. That means that when uh, X is zero, then for any value of T you pick, the value will always be zero. When X is zero, for any t that you pick, if the answer will always be zero. So that's why v zero one is zero. So therefore, just fill this one as zero point zero 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 zero, and then one one. So one one using that property that v i comma one equals to v i comma zero from the initial condition given, then it means that. Uh, V one one when I is one then is the same as one comma zero, so one zero is the same as one one, so one zero is the same as one one. So these have the same value four point three zero five one seven, and then V two one when you put here two then two one is the same as two zero, so two one is the same as two zero. So we have four point six two. One four zero. Uh, similarly, three one will be the same as three zero. So you get four point nine four and eight six. And then four one is the same as four zero, which is the same as uh, five point two nine one eight two. And then uh, next one. Five one is the same as five zero from that property, so we'll have five point six four eight seven two. Six one is the same as six zero, so it should be six point zero two two one two. Seven one is the same as seven zero, which is zero point zero seven uh, zero six five, and then eight one is the same as zero point nine zero three zero three. Nine one is the same as uh, nine zero, which is the same as six point six one two three seven, and then 
this is a boundary condition. So uh, 10, 1 is the same as 0. Uh, 10, 0 is the same as 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that is what we have. Now, so the last case, which actually you should be very careful with, is this case 3, whereby now we'll use now this formula. Case 3, when j equals to 2, is when now we use this uh, definition, this definition here. So let me just write it here. So j equals to 2. So here we have v0, 2, v1, 2, v2, 2, v3, 2, and then v4, 2, and then I have v5, 2, and then I have v6, 2, and then we have um, v6, uh, this from 6, 7, 2, and then we have uh, v8, 2, and then v9, 2, and then v10, 2. So, uh, so v10 to remember 10 is a boundary uh, so v, uh, 10 means x value at x10 and that x10 is a boundary a boundary point so this just 0 0.0000 you don't have to calculate this and then similarly a uh, value at v02 is a boundary boundary point so this means the value at x uh, uh, at x naught so this thing is 0 0.0000. But these other ones now is when we need to use this formula that V i comma J that formula one is given by V i plus one comma J plus V i minus one comma J minus V i comma J minus one. This is the Nicholson scheme for this problem what you have gotten as our equation one. So what does it mean? So to get, so this means, uh, remember at this point, J is two. So for me to, so J equals to two, so I'll have, what you ask yourself, like to define V one, two, remember this is the, form, this, uh, this is the stem of the formula, means that I, equals to one and j plus one equals to two so it tells you that the value of j is the same as two minus one so therefore uh in this case uh we have where this j you put one and where this i you put uh one where where where, where this i you put uh where, the, where this i you put one correct so therefore, uh, when we put, so we'll have V, to get V1, 2, so this I is 1, this one to give us 2, so the value of J must be 1. So uh, this is the case, I equals to 1, J equals to 1. So putting here, we'll have V, I is 1. So 1 plus 1, you get 2. J is 1, so comma 1, plus I, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so V naught. And then put here, j to be 1 and then minus i is 1 so v1 comma 1 minus 1 which is j 0 so that is what we get so these values we have them from the previous uh, results in case 1 and uh, case 1 and case 2 and then next one to define here i'm just demonstrating how uh, when you put in the values from the from case 1 and case 2 the values because these are already known when you put in, you get 0 0.31623. And the next one is to define the formula for V22. So V22, this is the stem of the formula. So remember I, I will be 2, and then J plus 1 should give you 2. 
So which means J is still one. So therefore now uh, we'll have, uh, what is I put two? So we'll have V two plus one, three, J is one plus what is I put to two minus one is two, two minus one is one. So V one comma one minus j i is two so v two comma one minus one is zero and when you replace these values already are known from case one when you put in you get your answer as zero point zero point uh, not zero point four point six Uh, 4.6, uh, 3, 3, 6, 3. And similarly, you use this formula here to get 3, and then uh, this point, remember this is J plus 1. So uh, all the values, so J plus 1, you equate to 2. So uh, for you to use this one at the stem, so J should be equals to 1. So therefore, uh, where 3, 2 means that I is 3, so we'll have V, 3, because this will be now this 3 plus 1, which is V4, uh, uh, V4, V4, because this is a case when you put here 3, then 3 plus 1 is 4, comma, this J is 1, plus 3 minus 1 is 2, J is 1, minus v i which is three and then comma zero because this would be one minus one when you put in you get four point nine six uh three three six i'm doing the same way uh let me give you the answers and please try to confirm try to check how the uh, how the formulas obtain so this will be v uh five comma one plus v three comma one minus v and then four comma zero when you put in the values you get five point three zero six seven six and then next one five two so we'll have v six one plus v four one minus v five zero when you're replacing the values from case one and two you get five point six six five two two uh, this is v seven comma one plus v five comma one minus v six comma zero gives you minus zero this is a strange value it's an abnormality here zero point zero two seven five and then V72 is V81 plus V61. Please confirm from the formula. V70, putting in the value, you get 0 0.68545. And then this is V9,1 plus V7,1 minus V. 8,0 equals to 5.77999. And lastly, the V10,1 plus V8,1 minus V9,0, which is minus 5. This is another strange value. Z0934. So these values are strange because possibly maybe the functions given uh in terms of sine and exponential and those uh, hyperbolic functions are what's making this ones to be strange but according to the solution of the functions given those are those are the correct answers so that is how we obtain the solution for that one what i encourage you is to go through the problem slowly so that you can master the concept and do as many examples on this same same 
question as possible. Thank you.